Welcome to Atmos 5000, Day 13. Our objectives for today are pulled from Chapter 5, Sections 5.1 and 5.2 from the Stoll textbook. And what we're doing today is we are introducing the different types of thermodynamic diagrams that we will be using to diagnose uh, convection in the atmosphere and the probability of thunderstorms. And an overview is that we'll be looking at the emigram, the tfi gram, the Stuvi diagram, the skew t log p, and the theta z diagrams. So the primary diagrams that have been used in atmospheric sciences and meteorology uh, started off with the emigram back in 1884, the tfi gram in 1915. The uh, Stuvi diagram was developed in 1927, and the skew T log P was developed during World War II uh, and uh, was uh, in its current form by 1947. And then there's also the specialty diagram, the theta Z diagram, which is a more modern type of thermodynamic analysis diagram that is used primarily for boundary layer research. An emigram is one of four thermodynamic diagrams used to display temperature lapse rate and moisture content profiles in the atmosphere. The emigram has axes of temperature and pressure, with temperature being on the x-axis and pressure being on the y. In the emigram, the dry adiabats make an angle of about 45 degrees with the isobars, and the isotherms are vertical and the isoplethes of saturation mixing ratio are almost straight and vertical. Usually, temperature and dew point data from radiosondes are plotted on these diagrams to allow calculations of convective stability or convective available potential energy. And wind barbs are often plotted at the side of the tfi gram to indicate the winds at different heights. The emigram was first devised in 1884 by Heinrich Hertz. Yes, that hurts. Uh, the emigram is used primarily in European countries, and other countries use similar thermodynamic diagrams for the same purpose. However, the details of their construction vary. And the emigram is considered to be the very first of the atmospheric thermodynamic diagrams created. A TV gram is one of four thermodynamic diagrams commonly used in weather analysis and forecasting. The name evolved from the original name, the T phi gram, uh, to describe the axes of temperature and entropy, which is often described with the variable phi. And usually, temperature and dew point data from radiosondes are plotted on these diagrams to allow the calculations of the convective stability and convective available potential energy, much like the emigram. And similar, wind barbs are often plotted on the side of the tfi gram to indicate the winds at different heights as well. The tfi gram was invented by uh, Napier Shaw in 1915 and is used primarily in the United Kingdom and Canada. Other countries use similar thermodynamic diagrams for the same purpose. Uh, in the tfi gram, the isotherms are straight and have a 45 degree inclination to the right, while isobars are horizontal and have a slight curve. The dry adiabats are also straight and have a 45 degree inclination to the left, while moist adiabats are curved. The main reason that the TV grams are used by the British Met Office and the Meteorological Service of Canada is the property that uh, area contained by the curves have equal energies uh, for equal areas. And that leads to better comparisons of the convective available potential energy and hence convective systems. The Stuvi diagram is one of the four thermodynamic diagrams commonly used for weather analysis and forecasting. It was developed around 1927 by German meteorologist uh, George uh, Stuvi, uh, and it quickly gained widespread acceptance in the United States to plot temperature and dew point from the radiant sons. This diagram has a simplicity in it that it uses straight lines for the three primary variables, pressure, 
temperature, and potential temperature. The isotherms are straight and vertical. Isobars, the lines of constant pressure, are straight and horizontal, and the dry adiabats are also straight and have a 45 degree inclination to the left, while the moist adiabats are curved. The wind barbs are often plotted on the side of the diagram to indicate the winds at different heights. Um, however, uh, using this configuration uh, sacrifices the equal area property of the original clausius clapeyron relation requirements between the temperature of the environment and the temperature of the parcel of air lifted from or lowered in the atmosphere. And although the STUVI diagram permits us to analyze the cloud cover and stability of an air mass, it is not a good thermodynamic diagram to calculate the convective available potential energy. And that's why the other three thermodynamic diagrams that we'll be talking about, the emigram, the TFEGram, and the skew T log P, are most often preferred uh, to the latter, especially in the United States. The skew T log P diagram is probably the most used thermodynamic diagram in the world uh, used for weather analysis and forecasting. It, it was developed in 1947 uh, when um, Professor Herlofsen uh, proposed a modification to the imagram that allows straight horizontal isobars and provides for a large angle between the isotherms and the dry adiabats, similar to that in the TFEGram. It was thus more suitable for some of the newer analytical techniques being invented by the United States Air Force, uh, namely trying to identify and predict the formation of contrails uh, behind aircraft in the atmosphere. Such a diagram has pressure plotted on the vertical axis with a logarithmic scale, and that's where the name the log P part of the skew T log P comes from. And the temperature axis is plotted skewed with the isotherm lines at 45 degrees in this plot, thus the skew T part of the name. Plotting a hypothetical set of measurements with constant temperature for all altitudes would result in a line angled 45 degrees to the right. In practice, since temperature usually drops with altitude, the graphs are usually more vertical uh, when plotted for actual data. The major use of the skew T log P diagrams is for plotting radiosond soundings, which give a vertical profile of the temperature and dew point throughout the troposphere and the lower stratosphere. The isopleths on the diagram can then be used to simplify many tedious calculations involved, which were previously performed by hand or not at all. Many skew T log P diagrams also include a vertical representation of the wind speed and direction using wind barbs along the uh, um, right side of the plot. Important atmospheric characteristics such as saturation, atmospheric instability, and wind shear are critical in severe weather forecasting, and the skew T log P diagram allows for a very quick visual analysis of these uh, properties. These diagrams are widely used by the National Weather Service uh, and uh, are also used by uh, glider pilots to forecast the strength of thermals and the height of the base of the associated cumulus clouds. The theta Z diagram is a special uh, research uh, diagram that's often used extensively in boundary layer meteorology. The orthogonal bases for this diagram are heights plotted as the y-axis and potential temperature plotted along the x-axis. Uh, most adiabats in this uh, figure curve to the right of the dry adiabats, but become parallel to the dry adiabats at high altitudes and cold temperatures. Heights are accurate in this diagram, but the isobars are only approximate. The isohumes tilt steeply upward and to the right.